Dear participants, welcome to you all. Today we are here for the online Turkish Korean Culture and Aesthetic Symposium. I am Betül Çanakpınar. We will be together on the first day of the symposium. I would like to share with you that I feel honored and happy to be here. I would like to read organizing committee of our symposium. The coordinating organizations are Balıkesir University, Kore University, Konkuk University, Anatolian Semiotic Research Association, Asian Semiotics International Association, Turkish Semiotic Society, Turkish Journal of Semiotic Studies, Center for Applied Cultural Sciences, International Journal of Applied Social and Human Sciences. Dear colleagues, aesthetic studies phenomenon of beauty, which is part of the sensory sphere. It's not enough to see aesthetic as a field of concern only with beauty. Aesthetics is a new and modern science. It's a component of culture. The material of aesthetics and problems it deals with are as old as human thought. In this regard, it's possible to determine the scope of aesthetics by revealing the essence of human sensitivity and beauty. We can determine the sensations, perceptions, lifestyles, testers, views on beauty and understanding of beauty of nations with the help of principles determined by aesthetics. Aesthetics means the philosophical study and evaluation of beauty. Culture refers to the traditions, customs, art and social norms of society. There is a close relationship between aesthetics and culture. Because each culture has its own aesthetic values, beliefs, historical and artistic traditions. These elements affect how a culture perceives and expresses beauty. The works of art, architecture, plotting and lifestyles. Sorry. Okay. The works of art, architecture, clothing, and lifestyles of these cultures are also shaped according to these aesthetics understandings. The perception of aesthetics may change over time, influenced by many factors, such as interaction, communication, migration, trade, war, art and technology between cultures. While the perception of aesthetics changes between cultures, there may also be some common points. For example, some aesthetic principles such as symmetry, proportion, color, harmony, rhythm, contrast are accepted as determiners of beauty in many cultures. These principles may be based on mathematical, physical, psychological, universal foundations. Therefore, people from different cultures may share a common appreciation of certain works of art or natural beauty. While the perception of aesthetics varies across cultures, it offers us different perspectives, ideas, emotions, and meanings. Aesthetics can be talked about for hours, but I don't want to prolong the word more because our time is limited. We will listen to very enjoyable presentations about the indispensable concept of aesthetics in all areas of life. We will have a chance to listen to studies that deal with different perspectives on aesthetics. But just before that, I would like to give the floor to Professor Dr. Sung Do Kim, President of Asian Semiotics International Association, for the opening speech of the symposium. Please, Sung Do Kim. Thank you, Betul uh, Ganapinara, for this uh, excellent speech. Uh, as a, a president of, uh, a founder president of the Asia, uh, Asian Semites of uh, International uh, wow. Association. It is a great pleasure and honor to be here uh, among you and it's uh, extremely joyful to announce the first online uh, Turkish Korean uh, uh, conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope uh, for this opportunity, uh, we will uh, make more uh, collaboration between two yeah. countries, two brother countries. All <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Korea, your brother. <laughs> yes. So it's a very symbolic uh, meeting. And uh, 
it's not only similar event but a cultural or uh, even political event <laughs> to open up uh, other possibilities between two uh, nations the topic of today was uh, uh, semiotic uh, and aesthetics uh, but I think oh, we'll broad the concept of aesthetics in other do domains and I hope uh, you will enjoy uh, this conference for two days and uh, well, I hope we will uh, keep in touch for other uh, possibilities for other uh, chances. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Sundo Kim, for your valuable speech. Now I would like to give the floor to Associate Professor Dr. Murat Kalelioğlu, co-president of Turkish Semiotic Society, for the opening speech of the symposium. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, dear colleagues and friends, I would like to welcome all of you to the first online, in fact, in you know, a Turkish-Korean symposium on aesthetics and culture. Then in this symposium, we try to explore, share, and understand the rich aesthetic and cultural heritage of two brotherly countries, Turkey and Korea. Then for this reason, the symposium offers a valuable platform that will allow us uh, to know the two countries' aesthetic understanding, art, culture, uh, and history, in fact, more closely. Then, although Turkey and Korea have been located in different uh, geographies throughout history, uh, they have left deep terraces with their unique cultures. Then our presence here today, in fact, reflects uh, our efforts to understand the aesthetic concerns and values of the two countries in science, culture, and art. Then, aesthetic is a broad concept, in fact, that is not limited to art. Then, from the beginning of human history to the present day, the traces of civilizations, glorious histories, let's say traditions, customs, and rich cultural heritage that both countries have hosted throughout history uh, offer a great diversity to the whole world in terms of aesthetic. As can be understood uh, from the topics here in the symposium program, it's clear that today, by bringing together the scientific representatives of these two fascinating nations uh, that have left uh, significant terraces in the history of humanity, a rich exchange of information on science, culture, and art will bring a lot to all of us. Then it's possible to see aesthetic here, uh, which is at the center of the scientific meeting, as a search for beauty and cannot be limited by definitions, of course. Then, uh, whether we see it or not, we are confronted with uh, natural or cultural aesthetic designs in nature, life, art, and everywhere. The nature as a source of inspiration and our repertory of example is another manifestation of uh, all the instruments or taste that we, that we will design, in fact. Then we are after the same fragments and taste in the fields produced by life and science by transforming the same beauty into another form. Then life and human sciences uh, have never been separated from this feeling and enthusiasm. Then it was not enough to design tools, an aesthetic form, an exuberant design was added to everything that was done. Then, although those tools provide ways of making work more accessible, then man is not satisfied, in fact, with what these tools do and has never stopped, in fact, adding beauty to each tool. Then, since the earliest times, 
and cave paintings. A man has decorated his place and tools that he used to bow in his hand and the belt around his waist, let's say, and even the arrow he shot with art, then all the literary and artistic designs that have flourished for centuries in even part of the world and every society continue to flow uh, in endless abundance. And as if all societies were in agreement, uh, they continued to add majestic or humble beauty to everything they designed. Then this infinite talent has never failed to produce new, exuberant, irresistible aesthetic products by blending the essence of human nature with the marvels of the external nature. Then all societies, or let's say of different ages in the world have included new aesthetic designs and efforts in their cultural environments and have never given up the attempt to develop designs with artistic and aesthetic value here. Then accordingly, humanity has not only been contented with the exuberant designs, it has added to the tools that facilitate daily life, but has also reflected and spread what it has achieved with aesthetic concerns to every field of human sciences. Then, with this scientific meeting, uh, we will pursue the enthusiastic endeavors reflected in the human sciences. Then we will prove once again that as extraordinary beings seeking beauty, and we do not stop searching for other beauties, of course. Then we will once again see how thought, which transforms from, an, let's say, imagine in memory into sound or writing, extracts every beauty form uh, from human nature, which we still need to learn better. Uh, throughout the symposium, we will enjoy fostering intercultural interaction and learning from different perspectives and adding beauty and richness to each other's world of thought. Then focusing on the unifying power of science, art and culture, we will enjoy discovering our similarities and differences once again and further strengthen intercultural understanding between us. Then consequently, this scientific collaboration extending from Turkey to South Korea will be an instrumental in other scientific partnerships that I believe that will take place from now on. And we will reach out to, uh, let's say, other meetings full of beauty reflecting uh, um, novel beauties. Then before concluding, uh, in fact, I would like to remember and remind you one of our masters, Professor Dr. Veli Doğan Günay, our esteemed professor, uh, friend and colleague who passed away a few months ago. Then Professor Günay, who made extraordinary contributions to Turkish semiotics, was a person who made it possible for us uh, to meet our Korean friends. First of all, especially with Professor Sundokin, and who was full of excitement about doing uh, something good for science together. Then he had a lot of dreams, in fact, and the realization of this symposium, and then the, I hope, uh, 2024 Asian Semiotics Congress uh, were, in fact, among his dreams. Then today, I would like to thank all my colleagues and friends and who contributed uh, to realizing this symposium, that one of his dreams, in fact, and I respectfully commemorate Professor Doan Günay, then may his soul rest in peace. And thank you for listening to me, and I hope this symposium will be an inspiring and memorable experience for all of us. Thank you very much.